The theme of today is balance of grace and law in sermons to motivate people biblically. Biblically. Biblically, I'm sorry. Balance of grace and law so that we are motivating people with grace at the same time reminding them to follow the law uh, in our sermons to motivate people biblically. To, uh, this is the biblical way to teach people uh, to uh, to preach. Now this is very important. Um, okay, now here this is very important slide to uh, discern between grace, law, uh, to tell us what to do, and law that warn us. Okay, let me go back one slide. Today we'll talk about the balance of grace and law in sermons to motivate people biblically. That we want to have a balance of grace uh, to motivate people with God's grace and remind them to obey God's law and with reminder and warning from God's law. But mainly it should be motivated by grace in our sermons to motivate people biblically, to motivate people in a biblical way. That, uh, that's what, uh, how the Bible motivates us. Okay, now here is a slide that shows uh, the discernment between grace and law, what to do, and law for warning. Okay, grace uh, will include God loves us, God accepts us, God cares for us, God provides for us, God has a plan for us, God gives strength, spiritual gifts, and opportunities to us, and God exalts our life and God rewards us for what we do for Him. So, uh, all this are what God do to us to bless us. Okay, that is grace. And then law, what to do? It's uh, what the law tells us to do. That we should love God. So, the, di a dif the difference between grace and law here, you can see, is our responsibility. Okay, we love God, we love people, and we shun sins. That means turn away from sins, avoid sins, pursue holiness, that we seek after holiness, and we love our family, and have compassion on people, and do evangelism, build up spiritual life for people, and build up the church, and etc. Et and, uh, and then law for warning. The law at the same time tells us what to do, at the same time warns us what will happen if we don't obey God. That God will discipline us, that God can punish us. And sin can destroy our family, our life, our church, and our future. And we can lose peace and self-image, that we lose our peace in God, our a clear conscience in God and also our self-image that we uh, uh, that we don't see ourselves as important and then Satan will steal kill and destroy from us and we can lose our salvation so that's the worst scenario so now so very clear that grace is what God does for us and law is what we should do. So whenever in a message is, if it's just telling people what to do, then you're just preaching law. We want to motivate people with God's grace, that God cares about us, God give us gifts, God give us opportunities, God uh, remembers what we do, and He will reward us to motivate people to follow God. Okay, and then, and this is biblical. God very often gives us promises of grace when He tells us what to do, uh, to do something, okay? Um, he 
God doesn't just tell us what to do. He gives us promises of grace, promise that He will help us. All of this promises. When He tells us to do something, when we study the Bible, we find that very often when God tells us what to do, He gives us promises of help. He will help us. He will be with us. And acknowledge what we do. And He gives us strength. And He accepts us. And He provides for us. And He rewards us. And many other things that He does for us. So we should use these promises to motivate people, to motivate ourselves and others to obey God. But it's a fact that many people don't understand this and then they just tell people what to do or use criticism to motivate people to change. That is very common that many people don't motivate people with God's grace. They just tell people what to do. So we must discern we must discern what is grace and law so that we motivate people with God's grace to tell them what to do with the law. Okay, the law tells us what to do, and grace gives us the motivation. Now, how God's grace and promises motivate us to obey and serve Him? So, these are a few points. Okay, now someone else can see, so it could be your network. So, please check again and try again. Okay, how God's grace and promises motivates us to obey and serve Him? First, God treasures us and wants us, wants to raise us to a high level. So first thing is that God sees each Christian as very important. He treasures us. We are very important in God's sight. And He wants to raise us up to a high level. So when we motivate people to love God, serve God, obey God, we tell them, God treasures you. You are very important. And God wants to raise you up to a high level. And secondly, God's grace and promises motivate us. So His, His grace and His promises motivate us. And He gives us strength and talents. So first is God toward us. He treasures us. And He gives us His grace and promises. And then He gives us His strength and talents. And He gives us opportunities and strategic plans to use our lives. So He does everything for us so that we can make the best use of our life. He gives us opportunities and He gives us strategic plans. And God appreciates and rewards those who sincerely obey and serve Him. So He would reward us. So these are a few things we can say to motivate people to obey and serve God. That God would treasure us. We are very important. He wants to raise us up to a high level and His Grace and promise will motivate us and He give us strength and talents and give us opportunities and strategic plans and appreciate and reward those who uh, serve, him, serve Him. Now why do I go over this? Because um, I want you to do satisfactory assignments so that you can get a certificate. When you do 10 satisfactory assignments, you can get a, uh, the first level um, certificate. I want you to succeed. So I explained this this to you again, so that you can, uh, so that you can understand it well. And how we can talk about God's nature and grace from a Bible passage to motivate people. So when we look at a Bible passage, when we look at a Bible passage, first we discover God's nature, grace, and commandment from the passage. So we look at a passage. We discover what it tells us about His nature and His grace and His commandment from the passage. And then, secondly, God wants to give us His nature. He wants to give us His love, joy. So whatever that passage talk about, that He give, wants to give us His joy, His love, His peace, His wisdom. So when the Bible talks about His wisdom, He wants to give us His wisdom. And He wants to give us His motivation. God is a motivator and he wants to give us power his power is not just not is not just for himself he wants to give us his power and wonderful plan and provision 
And God wants to help us to live out His nature. God wants to help us. And then God is pleased with us and will reward us when we live out God's nature. So He's very happy with us when we live out His love, joy, peace, wisdom, motivation, power, wonderful plan, and provision. He, he wants us to enjoy Him and to be strengthened by Him to glorify His name. Now at the same time, we have God's law that does give us more uh, does give us motivation and warning, but it should not be the main motivation. It does give us motivation, but it's a secondary motivation. In Galatians 6, 8, For he who sows the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So the Bible warns us that if we follow the flesh, that is a sinful nature, we'll reap corruption or destruction. And Jesus said to the man, Heal or 38 years of sickness, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So people can, if they sin, they, the worst thing can happen to them. And then number three, Matthew 25, 45, Inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, and this will go away into everlasting punishment. So people who don't, Due to the little brothers of Jesus, they will have to go into everlasting punishment. Now, we're not saved by works. We're not saved by serving God. But when we have real faith, then we will want to serve God. Then we want to bless other people, want to help other people. And so when we, uh, when we serve God and uh, because of Jesus' life in us, God is very happy with us and He will reward us. But if a person have no living relationship with God. Even though he might say he believes in God, he, that is not real faith. It's dead faith. And he will not want to bless people. Then, if he has zero faith, a zero, zero real faith and zero good works that shows that his faith is dead, then he has to go into everlasting punishment. And that is what Matthew 25, the second and third parable talk about. So these are the warnings from the Bible. So we do have the warnings. Uh, it doesn't mean that people can do anything they want. They will suffer if they don't obey God. Okay, and then so God's grace should be the main motivation and God's law should be a secondary motivation or reminder. Okay, and then sermons can include these points to motivate people. Now, these points, you don't have to have all these points. I just say you can have all these points. It's up to you. And these three in red are the main ones. These three we must have. They are very important. And I tell you the importance of each point. First, introduction. How people don't live out and do, and do live out this particular nature of God. For instance, if we preach about God's love, then we talk about how people don't love, how Christians, some so-called Christians, don't live out love. They see non-Christians coming in the church, they don't care about them, they don't greet them, they don't welcome them, so they don't have love for them. Even though, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to love and Christians say, yes, we should love, but many Christians see newcomers to the church and they don't care about them. They don't go up to welcome them. So that is a lack of love. Or in the family, they will fight with the family members. That is a lack of love. So this is like an introduction, telling people that even though the Bible tells us what to do, but many Christians don't follow God's instruction. And then two, interpretation of the biblical passage. So we want to explain the passage to people. And three, very important, God's nature and grace. Now here, these are three points here. God's nature, He is love. God is love. Now, when we preach about God's love, when we preach about God's wisdom, then we say God is wise. God is the source of all, of all wisdom. And God gives us His love. He wants to pour His love, His love into us through the Holy Spirit. He wants us to experience His love. He wants to bless us with His love. And then God will reward us when we love Him. So these are three simple points that we can talk about God's nature and grace. That first, God has that nature. Secondly, God gives us that nature. 
And thirdly, God will reward us when we follow that nature. Now, if we change to a different topic like wise, God is wise and God wants to give us his wisdom. And then God will reward us when we live in his wisdom. So that's very simple that we can follow to talk about God's nature and grace. Now we can expand it more. You can expand it more. For instance, love. You can expand it more. Like for instance, you can describe how God's love touches us when we praise and worship Him. So that's one way we experience His grace. That when we worship Him, that we'll experience His love. And His love will change our hearts. His love will draw us to Him. Change many stubborn people, many people who don't want to obey God. God will use His love to change us. There are many people, they, when they pray, when they uh, worship God, when they hear messages, sometimes they shed tears. They are so touched with God's love that they cry. That shows that God is touching the heart. So we can expand this. Now, we should uh, want to present God's nature and grace in a way that touches people's heart. That we want to put in our feelings. God has such strong feeling toward us and we should also have feelings toward God. So when we talk about God's love, it's not just talking about something objectively. We don't want to talk about love as God's love as something we, ha we can experience and we have experienced. That we can experience His love when we praise and worship, we feel joyful and peaceful. This is expression of God's love. And we might feel touch in the heart. That is God's love. So we want to talk about this so that people are touched with God's nature and His grace. And that is the main motivation. Okay. And then four, why people don't live out this particular nature. Now here uh, for the theme of God's love, that because people are basically selfish, even as Christians. Many Christians just think about themselves. They just think about what they want to get and what they are suffering from. They don't think about what other people are suffering from. When we just think of ourselves, then we actually suffer more. But when we think of other people, we want to bless them more, that we'll be blessed by God more. And then five, reminder and warning from God's commandment. For instance, in 1 John 3, 14, He who does not love does not, uh, uh, are not in God and they abide in death. So he who does not love at all, he has no love at all, then he is living in death. So that's warning that if a person has no love at all, he's just like a sounding gong. It's nothing. And if he's zero love, that he could have no spiritual life, that he's not born again. And then how? This very important to talk about how. How to live out this particular nature uh, to, and uh, for instance here, love. How to live out God's love. Uh, now, this is for us to expand. For instance, we can talk about first, we want to experience God's love more when we praise and worship Him. And we look at nature and we can see God's love because God created wonderful food for us uh, and He created nature so beautiful for us to enjoy and God created our body so wonderful and God has sent His Holy Spirit into our heart. So we want to remember how the Holy Spirit guides us and we want to appreciate God. We thank God. God is guiding me. God is leading me. So I want to uh, appreciate God's love and I want to respond to God's love. So that is one way. And then second is, we think about the people who need God's love. They are suffering and they don't have hope. We want to bring hope to them. We want to bring love to them. So we want to care about these people who are suffering. And then um, uh, we can talk about how we can learn from other people to love people more. We can see how uh, other people are caring for people, we learn from them. And we start to care about the people around us, the people we see every day, we want to love them. So there are different points we can talk about. 
And also another point is how to overcome our hardness of our heart. If our heart is hardened, Okay, if our heart is hardened, then uh, we need to repent. We need to repent. And we need to uh, examine our heart and ask, why don't I have love for people and repent of our sins? And ask God to change us. And prayer, prayer for strength and for motivation to change. And then challenge to people. Do we want to live with love and then God is happy with us? God will bless us for those who love. For those who love God and love people, God will prepare for us things that eye have not seen, the ear has not heard, and the human mind has not thought of. That He will prepare for us things that are so wonderful. So these few points, especially the three points are very important. Now let me explain what each point is important. The first point how people don't live out or live out God's uh, this particular nature is to raise up people's awareness. Even though Christians talk about love, but very often Christians don't have love. Uh, there are many Christians who have love, but there are many Christians who don't have love too. Uh, so we want to waken people up, wake people up. And then secondly, we need to ex interpret the Bible passage. And third point is very important to talk about God's nature and grace so that people are motivated by God's nature to love. And then four, why people don't live out. So the reason why, because they are selfish, because their heart is hardened, because they don't have a close relationship with God. So people will wake up to their problems. That is the, uh, why, why they don't live out God's nature. And then Reminder and warning, this is from the law. Now, sometimes you can put four and five together. Why they don't live out? And then God's warning. But I just separate here, but you can put them together. That there is warning from the Bible that if we don't love, then uh, that we are abiding in death. That we don't have spiritual life. That is warning for us. That when people don't bear fruit, it will be cut off from the tree and thrown into the fire. And then how, it's very important to talk about how, how to do it, step by step, how to break our old habits, how to have connection with God so that He will give us a new nature. And then challenge to people to change, okay? So these seven points are helpful for us to write sermons that no matter how, you know, you can have different outlines. But I hope that you will contain, you will have these three elements at least. At least we must talk about God's nature and grace so that people see God's goodness. Whatever topic we talk about. If we talk about evangelism, it's God who wants to save people. That's why He sent His Son to die for us. That is why He sent the Holy Spirit uh, to move in our heart, to guide us, to motivate us to do evangelism. Uh, that is God's nature that He wants to save people and then He moves in our heart to push us to do evangelism and He will give us wisdom how to do evangelism. He will guide us how to do it and then He will reward us when we do evangelism. And then uh, why people don't do evangelism? Because people, they, they feel shy. They are rejected by people and they're not happy with that. So they care about their own feeling more than other people's soul. We want to care about other people's soul. We want to bring salvation to people. And the reminder and warning that many people, you know, they just don't obey God and they don't take it seriously. And how we can step by step do evangelism. First, we pray for the people around us. We, we care about them. We want them to be safe and we can think about that how happy it is in heaven and how terrible it is in hell and that motivates us to I want to bless people and how we can enjoy God's presence we want to tell people how we enjoy God's presence and also how we experience healing and we want to tell people how God heals us so that we can bring people to Jesus so these seven points I hope you will remember this I will send these pictures to you 
so that you can remember this. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the uh, the passage here to demonstrate how to uh, write a sermon, so you all can learn to do it. 